Я не думал в тот момент ничего о стратегии Вагнера. Я думал, как, я не знаю, как бы, наверное, выжить и не... What happened the day that you were captured? На модель, а, в общем... What will happen if Wagner Group ends up capturing Joseph Kony, the notorious leader of the LRA known for his brutality? Despite numerous promises from the West to bring peace by apprehending such extremist leaders in Africa, they have consistently failed to deliver. Why? Because their commitment has often been more rhetoric than action. However, the Wagner Group has already initiated the hunt. Yet the West appears increasingly concerned about Africa's security. Is this concern driven by fears of Russia exploiting its influence over Africa, or is it rooted in the West's apprehension of losing its grip on the continent? And the million-dollar question remains, what will happen if Kony is captured? Let's find out. In the world of global conflict, where the boundaries between state and non-state actors blur, one name stands out, Joseph Kony, the elusive leader of the Lord's Resistance Army, LRA. For decades, Kony and his brutal militia have wrought havoc across Central Africa, leaving a trail of destruction and despair in their wake. Despite relentless efforts by African military forces to capture him, Kony remains a shadowy figure, evading justice and perpetuating fear among local populations. A surprising development has emerged. The Wagner Group, a Russian private military contractor notorious for its covert operations, has reportedly joined the hunt for Kony. As the world watches with bated breath, the hunt for Joseph Kony by the Wagner Group unfolds against a backdrop of uncertainty, raising profound questions about accountability, transparency, and the pursuit of justice in the face of relentless violence. To understand the significance of the Wagner Group's involvement in the hunt for Joseph Kony, it's essential to delve into the Lord's Resistance Army's origins and actions. So how did LRA rise to the point that Russia has prioritized eliminating it? Founded by Kony in 1987, the LRA emerged as a rebel group operating primarily in Uganda. It later expanded its reach into neighboring countries like the Central African Republic CAR, South Sudan, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo DRC. Joseph Kony, a self-proclaimed prophet and leader of the Akoli ethnic group in northern Uganda, initially framed the LRA's mission as a spiritual crusade against the Ugandan government. However, over time, the LRA's activities became increasingly brutal and indiscriminate, targeting civilians and committing atrocities in the name of its cause. One of the defining characteristics of the LRA's modus operandi was its extensive use of child soldiers. Kony and his commanders abducted thousands of children from their homes, imbuing them with a toxic blend of religious fanaticism and fear. These child soldiers were subjected to horrific abuse, forced to commit acts of violence against their communities, and denied any semblance of a normal childhood. The impact of the LRA's reign of terror was felt acutely across Central Africa, as entire communities were uprooted and displaced by violence. Villages were raided, schools were destroyed, and families were torn apart by the LRA's relentless campaign of terror. The brutality of the LRA's tactics earned it a reputation as one of the most notorious armed groups in the world, with Kony himself becoming a symbol of pure evil in the eyes of many. Despite international efforts to bring him to justice, including multiple arrest warrants issued by the International Criminal Court ICC for war crimes and crimes against humanity, Kony remained at large. Despite being the subject of intense manhunts and military operations, his ability to evade capture only enhanced his mystique and infamy. Over the years, various attempts were made to negotiate peace with the LRA, but all efforts faltered. Kony's refusal to engage in meaningful dialogue and utter disregard for human life rendered diplomatic efforts futile. Instead, the LRA continued to roam freely across the jungles and savannas of Central Africa, leaving death and destruction in its wake. By the early 2000s, the LRA's activities had drawn the attention of the international community, prompting calls for decisive action to end the group's reign of terror. In 2005, the United States designated Kony and the LRA as terrorists, signaling a new phase in the fight against the group. The U.S. government provided logistical and intelligence support to Ugandan forces in their efforts to capture or kill Kony, culminating in the launch of Operation Observant Compass in 2011. Despite these efforts, 
Coney remained elusive, slipping through the cracks of military operations and melting away into the vast wilderness of Central Africa. Despite the combined efforts of regional and international forces, his ability to evade capture was a testament to his cunning and ruthlessness. The LRA's activities waned as the years passed, but Coney's grip on power remained firm. While the group's numbers dwindled and its influence waned, Coney continued to elude capture, repeatedly evading the grasp of justice. Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. In the face of this challenge, the question remained, who could finally bring Joseph Coney to justice? Well, maybe the Wagner Group. Amidst the complexity of global conflicts, the Wagner Group emerges as a shadowy and enigmatic entity, wielding influence and power in some of the world's most volatile regions. Founded in 2014 by Russian oligarch Yevgeny Prigozhin, the Wagner Group operates as a private military company PMC, offering its services to various clients, including governments, rebel groups, and other non-state actors. At its core, the Wagner Group represents a new breed of mercenary outfit that operates outside traditional military structures and regulations. With close ties to the Russian government and security services, the Wagner Group often serves as a proxy for Russian foreign policy objectives, providing deniable support to allies and advancing Moscow's interests in regions of strategic importance. One of the Wagner Group's most notable deployments has been in Ukraine, where it played a decisive role in the conflict in Donbass, supporting pro-Russian separatist forces and engaging in fierce battles against Ukrainian government troops. The Wagner Group's involvement in Ukraine highlights its willingness to operate in defiance of international norms and regulations, drawing condemnation from Western governments and human rights organizations. In addition to its activities in Ukraine, the Wagner Group has also been active in Syria, where it has provided critical support to the regime of Bashar al-Assad in its fight against rebel groups and ISIS militants. Wagner operatives have been involved in some of the most intense battles of the Syrian civil war, including the capture of the city of Bahoud during the Russian invasion of Ukraine in 2022. Following Prigozhin's death, the Wagner Group's leadership passed to Anton Yazaro, also known as Lotus, who oversaw a restructuring of the organization. Some factions of the Wagner Group were integrated into the Russian National Guard. In contrast, others continued to operate independently including the Africa Corps, which has become increasingly active in African conflicts. In Africa, the Wagner Group's Africa Corps has expanded its reach and influence, operating in countries such as Libya, Mali, Niger, and the Central African Republic. These deployments have bolstered Russian regional influence and provided lucrative opportunities for the Wagner Group to profit from conflict and instability. As the Wagner Group's influence grows, particularly in Africa, Questions remain about its activities' long-term implications. Will the Wagner Group's involvement in conflicts like the hunt for Joseph Kony in the Central African Republic mark a turning point in the fight against terrorism? In the dense jungles and savannas of Central Africa, the hunt for Joseph Kony has taken on a new dimension with the reported involvement of the Wagner Group. The arrival of Russian private military contractors in the region has injected a new sense of urgency into efforts to capture or neutralize the elusive warlord, whose reign of terror has spanned decades and claimed countless lives. The decision to enlist the services of the Wagner Group comes after years of frustration and failure by African military forces to apprehend Kony and dismantle the Lord's Resistance Army LRA. Despite concerted efforts by regional and international actors, including the United States, Kony has managed to evade capture, moving between remote hideouts and exploiting the porous borders of Central African countries. Reports of the Wagner Group's involvement in the hunt for Kony first surfaced in early 2024, following a series of covert operations in the Central African Republic, according to eyewitness accounts and intelligence reports cited by Rolling Stone magazine, Wagner operatives, operating under the guise of Chadian armed groups, engaged in a fierce firefight with LRA fighters near a village in the eastern part of the country. The operation, which resulted in casualties on both sides, failed to capture Kony but succeeded in rescuing enslaved children who had been held captive by the LRA for years. The dramatic rescue mission and the Wagner Group's apparent willingness to engage directly with armed groups in the region 
underscored the group's capabilities and determination to achieve its objectives. Despite the initial setback, reports suggest that the Wagner Group remains committed to the hunt for Kony, deploying additional resources and personnel to track down the elusive warlord. Intelligence sources have indicated that Kony and his fighters may have fled towards Sudan following the failed operation, seeking refuge in remote border areas beyond the reach of pursuing forces. The Wagner Group's involvement in the hunt for Kony raises questions about the role of private military contractors in conflict resolution and the broader implications for regional stability. While some observers have welcomed the intervention as a potential game-changer in the fight against terrorism, Others have expressed concerns about the lack of transparency and accountability surrounding the Wagner Group's operations. Western critics argue that the use of private military contractors like the Wagner Group undermines efforts to promote good governance and respect for human rights in conflict-affected areas. By operating outside the bounds of traditional military structures and regulations, private military contractors can bypass established mechanisms for oversight and accountability raising the risk of abuse and misconduct. Moreover, the Wagner Group's close ties to the Russian government have fueled speculation about Moscow's motives and intentions in supporting the hunt for Kony. Western analysts have suggested that Russia's involvement in the Central African Republic, which has sought to expand its influence through military and economic means, may be driven by geopolitical considerations rather than a genuine commitment to counterterrorism. But the reality is, the hunt for Joseph Kony by the Wagner Group represents a new chapter in the ongoing struggle to bring justice to the victims of the LRA's reign of terror. As the operation unfolds and new developments emerge, the world watches with hope and apprehension, mindful of the complex dynamics in one of Africa's most troubled regions. Once, the West promised Africa to save it from terrorism, and when Russia is doing it, the US seems to be bothered, Will the Wagner Group hunt for Kony have a positive impact, or is it something to worry about? The involvement of the Wagner Group in the hunt for Joseph Kony carries profound implications for the ongoing conflict in Central Africa and the broader global security landscape. As Russian private military contractors join the fray, the dynamics of the conflict are poised to shift, with far-reaching consequences for regional stability and the fight against terrorism. The Wagner Group's intervention in the hunt for Kony highlights the changing dynamics of global security and the growing influence of non-state actors in shaping conflict resolution efforts. Traditionally, the fight against terrorism has been led by state actors, with international coalitions and alliances playing a central role in coordinating responses to terrorist threats. However, the rise of private military contractors like the Wagner Group represents a new frontier in the fight against terrorism. However, Russia's growing presence in Africa has raised eyebrows in Western capitals, where policymakers fear that Moscow's ambitions could undermine Western interests and exacerbate existing conflicts. Moreover, Russia's support for authoritarian regimes and non-state actors in Africa has drawn criticism from human rights advocates, who warn of the potential for further repression and instability in the region. But why is West so concerned? Are they concerned about the security issues Africa will face or losing its dominance to Russia? The West, including prominent powers like the United States and the European Union, has historically regarded Africa as a crucial area for security and economic interests. This perception stems from various factors, including Africa's vast natural resources, its geopolitical significance as a gateway to other regions, and its potential as a market for Western goods and services. Over the years, Western nations have engaged with Africa through various means, including diplomatic relations, aid and development programs, and military cooperation agreements. However, in recent times, the presence of Russian private military contractors in Africa has emerged as a significant challenge to Western dominance in the region. These PMCs, often operating under the auspices of companies like the Wagner Group, have been increasingly active across the continent providing military support to various governments and non-state actors. Their involvement in conflicts, training of local forces, and protection of strategic assets have raised concerns among Western policymakers about Moscow's intentions and ambitions in Africa. The presence of Russian PMCs in Africa is particularly noteworthy against Russia's broader efforts to expand its global influence and challenge Western-led initiatives and alliances. 
Moscow's assertive foreign policy, characterized by military interventions, strategic partnerships, and arms sales, has positioned Russia as a key player in regions traditionally dominated by Western powers. In Africa, Russian involvement is perceived as a means to counter Western influence, gain access to resources, and establish footholds for geopolitical actions. For Western powers, the growing presence of Russian PMCs in Africa presents a multifaceted challenge. Firstly, it undermines efforts to promote stability and security in the region, as Russian-backed actors may pursue agendas divergent from those endorsed by the West. Secondly, it complicates diplomatic and economic engagements with African governments, as they may leverage Russian support as a bargaining chip against Western pressure or influence. Lastly, it reinforces perceptions of a shifting global power dynamic, where Russia is seen as a viable alternative to Western leadership, particularly in regions where historical ties exist. In response, Western powers have sought to counter Russian influence in Africa through diplomatic initiatives, economic incentives, and military cooperation. Efforts to strengthen ties with African governments, increase investment and development assistance, and enhance security cooperation aim to mitigate the impact of Russian engagement. Additionally, Western nations have raised awareness about the potential risks associated with Russian involvement, emphasizing the importance of transparent and accountable governance practices in Africa's relations with external actors. Overall, the presence of Russian PMCs in Africa represents a complex challenge to Western dominance in the region, with implications for security, geopolitics, and economic interests. As competition between global powers intensifies, the dynamics of engagement in Africa will likely evolve, shaping the continent's trajectory in the 21st century. Now, the question is, what ease will the Wagner Group's involvement bring to counter-terrorism efforts in Africa? The Wagner Group's involvement presents opportunities to disrupt the LRA's operations and dismantle its networks. The group's expertise and resources could provide valuable support to regional security forces in their efforts to track down Kony and degrade the LRA's capacity to perpetrate violence. Moreover, the Wagner Group's presence in the region could deter other armed groups, signaling a willingness to confront and neutralize threats to regional stability. The hunt for Kony also offers an opportunity to reevaluate and strengthen international cooperation in the fight against terrorism. While the involvement of private military contractors may raise concerns about sovereignty and accountability, it also underscores the need for coordinated and collaborative responses to transnational security challenges. By working together, states can pool their resources and expertise to address shared threats more effectively and uphold common principles and values. Furthermore, the hunt for Kony could catalyze broader efforts to promote peace and stability in Central Africa. By addressing the root causes of conflict and investing in long-term development initiatives, states can create conditions conducive to lasting peace and prosperity. This requires a comprehensive approach that addresses political, economic, and social grievances, and a commitment to inclusive and participatory governance processes. It is clear that we stand at a pivotal moment in the history of conflict resolution and counterterrorism efforts in Central Africa. The involvement of Russian private military contractors in pursuing the elusive warlord represents a bold and audacious gambit that carries with it both promise and peril for the region and the world at large. At its core, the hunt for Kony is about more than just capturing a single individual. It is about confronting the legacy of violence and instability that has plagued Central Africa for decades. The Lord's Resistance Army, under Kony's leadership, has wrought havoc on innocent civilians, terrorizing communities and leaving a trail of death and destruction in its wake. By bringing Kony to justice, we have an opportunity to deliver a measure of closure and justice to the countless victims of the LRA's brutality, and to begin the long and arduous process of healing and reconciliation in the region. It is essential to remain vigilant and steadfast in our commitment to upholding the principles of justice, accountability, and respect for human rights. The hunt for Kony must be conducted with the utmost care and sensitivity to the needs and perspectives of local communities, ensuring that they are not further marginalized or victimized in the pursuit of justice. Moreover, efforts to address the root causes of conflict in Central Africa must be redoubled, focusing on promoting inclusive governance, addressing economic inequalities, 
and fostering social cohesion and resilience. Despite the formidable obstacles, there is cause for cautious optimism in the pursuit of Joseph Kony and the dismantling of the Lord's Resistance Army. The Wagner Group's involvement, with its resources and expertise, offers a glimmer of hope that Kony's days as a fugitive may be numbered. Do you think the Wagner Group will successfully find Kony? If it does, will it strengthen African ties with Russia? Let us know in the comments section if you think Russia's involvement in Africa's safety must be viewed optimistically. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If so, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.